question is, is that she's unfamiliar with how to tell when the sessions close while watching candles. So I, I def, you definitely can show her that on the charts with the uh, dailies and separations. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so let's go here and properties. Oh, oh, I think went left, all the way left. And she got like two part question, but I'll let you answer it. Okay. All right. So right here, I'm just putting a tool on for session breaks. Let me make this a little bit skinnier. So this will allow me to see inside of the market every 24 of these. Remember, we're on an hour time frame right now. Every 24 hours is letting me know when a new day starts. So a new session is starting up in a sense as well, where I'm looking at this saying, okay from the start are you saying like in a, in a sense of uh when you say sessions are you meaning like uh london and then the uh the new york and then the asian and things of that nature right okay okay well i can just give you the time frames if you're on eastern essentially what you're looking for is around three o'clock that's when the, the uh, london session starts up and then right around like eight nine o'clock uh eastern standard time a.m that's when the new york starts up and then right after that, we have around like five o'clock, six o'clock ish. That's when the Asian session starts up. I'm giving you these two different times because daylight saving time just switches up a little bit. So I'm around the, you know, five o'clock, six o'clock time frame. That's when the Asian session starts up. And then within that Asian session, you're dealing with a lot of consolidation. There's also like the Sydney session starts up as well. So that actually like kind of puts you in a little bit of a funk. But what you have to notice is every time you see one of these lines here, when you go to the uh, time separate, the period separators, this just shows you that this is the beginning of a brand new day. So around right here, it's five o'clock. This is the Asian session starting up. And you'll notice exactly right when this happens, look at what happens with the candles, right? Five o'clock starts, and then just what happens? Sideways movement. Five o'clock starts, sideways movement. Five o'clock starts, sideways movement. Five o'clock starts, sideways movement. So you start to get an understanding that during these times of day, there's not a lot of volatility. There's not a lot of movement. And us as traders, we're slaves to the volatility, right? We, we can't make money unless the market's moving. So mm -hmm. this puts you in a mind frame of when are the best times to get into the market. And this is when you have to start tailoring your trading strategy towards the times that work for you. Me and Jay were just talking about time frames and certain sessions that makes, that makes money for him. He was like, man, I can't seem to you know, find my niche in these other time frames. But when I'm, when I'm in the London session, I'm killing it. Right. London for him just makes it makes sense. His, his pairs start to flow. His trading strategies are more beneficial. And then when he finds himself in something like the New York or the Asian, it's not as lucrative for him. So now he finds his niche inside of that London. All he has to do is just continue to just hammer home his niche. We're inside of that trading session. And that's the same thing we all have to do. You have to find what works for you and your lifestyle and just grow and build upon that. Because if you're learning somebody else's strategies. Right. And you're sitting in front of the chart, you're saying this just isn't making sense to me. I don't know what I'm missing. Something's not, something's not clicking here. It may just be you looking at the wrong time frame. I'm sorry, the wrong sessions. And now it's not making sense. Tabitha, what's going on? Consolidation happens when a country opens their market. No, no, no. Consolidation doesn't happen every time. So trust me, when the, when the <laughs> London session starts up and that market opens, it is not about to consolidate <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning. I promise you that. But what happens is consolidation it's simply just when there's not a lot of volatility, meaning there's not a lot of orders happening. The banks aren't moving a lot of money. All right. So consolidation can happen literally at any time. It's just showing that inside of the market, like the Asian session, there's not a lot of volatility. Typically, there's not a lot of volatility. OK. For for Amy, I just wanted to show one thing, Kurt, if you can show my screen, make sure we are seeing it. Oh, I yeah. I can, uh, well, you, I, I'll stop sharing. And you can share. Are you or this is you right here. OK, let me uh, go ahead. So you can show your screen. Go ahead. Uh, if you can see it right there, this is an app called Go Forex, and it literally telling me how many hours is left for the for the New York, for the London. I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah, you got the screen. Yeah. So this is an app called Go Forex, and it literally tell you how many minutes and hours is left to the next session. So the app looks like this. Uh, Right here. iPhone, y'all pray for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you see that 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 one right there? Uh right there, that pink one. Go for it. Okay. okay. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. And it'll definitely um help you out too. But those uh like Curtis said, those session breaks help out uh, tremendously.
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see. Let me pull back up the uh, chat really quick. All right. All is well. Hope the banks are taking out the prices during the consolidation. No. She said, so the banks are talking about prices during consolidation or no. So what I like to show you guys is this too. Like when you, when you see the market consolidating in more than just like the Asian session, like right now, this is a Euro dollar, right? One of the most highly traded pairs in Forex, right? Now, a lot of people love trading Euro USD. I am not a big fan of Euro USD. I have my own opinions about it, but that doesn't mean that there's not a lot of money inside of Euro USD. So essentially, like I said, right around here, like we can see at the end of every day, right? Five o'clock starts. We got some consolidation, consolidation. Same thing here. Market goes sideways, sideways, sideways for a good, a good amount of time sideways moving and then we start to get some volatility later on in the day right around that london session you know kind of ramping up right towards that time frame so man my laptop is moving extra slow right now for some odd reason there we go so essentially right now we see consolidation in these smaller periods right here like a few hours of consolidation right every time the london session i mean every time the asian session starts up but now let's look at the greater scheme of things right what's happening right now inside of this market right now right? We were just dealing with a market that was doing what? Just sideways movement within this little range right here, right? We were dealing with a lot of sideways movement. So if I was going to sit here and say this right here was moving in a sideways motion, would I be wrong, right? We had a market that was just inside of this area bouncing around and it finally broke out and now we retested it and we broke back to the downside. So Essentially, what happens is you have to be able to see the overall strength in the market and not let the, you know, the, the smaller time frames kind of confuse you. So if you understand how this works and the one thing, I, the reason why I really want to show you guys this is simply because during the summer months and the early parts of the year, we have a lot of volatility in the market. It's rain. I mean, it's just moving. It's trending high and low. We got big buying movement, big selling movement. Everything looks really great. It's, it's great. and It's easy to find entries. But around this third quarter, fourth quarter of the year, you have to think like an investor, all right? You can't just sit here and say, well, I hope it does this, or I hope it does that, or I hope swipe trades, or I hope the scanner. You have to think like an investor. There's not a lot of movement taking place during these later had the latter halves of the year because the banks in these large hedge funds and large corporations, they're not moving money all around like they did earlier in the year, right? The shareholders are happy. The stockholders are, are all, you know, done. They're, they're on vacation, right? They're out in the Hamptons, living it up, about to have Thanksgiving and Christmas and everything else. Going to spend some of that money that they made from the early parts of the year. There's not going to be a whole lot of movement. So understanding that, these are typically the markets that we deal with around the latter half of the year. If you can't learn how to trade inside of a range, then you're going to basically be putting your, you know, your trading career and cutting it in half saying, well, I only trade the first two quarters of the year and the last half of the year. I'm just living off of, you know, whatever I got then. Hopefully that's enough money to pay for the, the kids Christmas presents. But I just want to make sure you guys have an understanding of how this market works because we all know it can only go up, down or sideways. And mathematically, the market actually ranges 70 percent of the time. So 70 percent of the time when it's moving sideways, what are you doing? Sitting on the bench? Or are you ready to get in? So you have to start to expand yourself a little bit. And this is where having discipline and understanding what happens inside of these pairs makes sense. OK, so let's say if I, if I gave you guys a hypothetical and said, if you traded, you know, 12 pairs for the week, would you be able to make money consistently? And you would say, yeah, maybe so. Now, if you traded 12 pairs for the week, is it possible that you can have nine to 10 losses inside of that week? OK, or if you traded one pair right? Would you make a good amount of money? Maybe, sort of. Now, if you traded one pair, would you have nine and 10 losses in one pair for that week? It's much less likely because now you're able to actually find movements and ride those movements based on that one pair's movement. And now you understand it. You're starting to get the, the vibe of the, the highs, the lows, what the pair likes to do. You start to master exactly what's happening within this pair. So now you have a much more I guess, conducive understanding, a much more efficient manner of trading this pair. And the thing is, you find you're a niche with something and now you can just go hard with it. Okay. A lot of times we jump into the market and we're trading every single currency, right? We jump in, news happens and it's like, okay, this week I'm trading everything on the list. I'm trading every high impact news, right? 
you on Forex Factory, you're looking at everything that's red and orange and saying, I'm in. I'm in on all of it, right? Let me filter this for you guys. If you don't know how to filter it, you come to the Forex Factory, go to the calendar right here at Filter, and we can get rid of this low impact news, right? Boom. And now all we get is high and medium. And you in here looking at everything high and, high and medium related, and you just want to trade it all. You cannot do that and think that you're going to be profitable in this market because now you're going to be just spinning your wheels, jumping around, trying to trade every single thing, and you won't be able to find any traction. All right? <laughs> you say you got booed up with a pair. I feel you, Mike. I feel you. What's going on, brother? So one of those situations, guys. Let's see. You got something for me, Jay? Yeah. So so we got um, questions coming in this week, man. So Okay. The, the thing of it is, is like last, last week we talked about pairs too, but this one is a little t twist on it. They saying, well, how do you come to identify with well, what pair should you pick? Ah. How should you pick the pair? You know, what, what, uh, what goes involved? What's involved with that? Okay. So you want to find a pair that moves during certain hours of the day that makes sense for you. Okay, let's say if you're a full-time student, right? You may not be able to trade at a certain time of day. Or let's say that you have a full-time job. Or let's say that you're a full-time parent, right? You got to sit at home. You got to prepare the breakfast. You got to get the kids ready for school. You got to do all these things. You got to clean up, da, da, da. That's a lot to sit down and do the London or do the, do the New York session, okay? Or if you're a full-time student, your classes may be in the evening. You may get out of class and be really tired, right? You're like, man, I want to stay up and do this London, but I need to sleep. I did my homework. I've studied. I got to write this paper. I did research. I, I'm just tired. I can't do this and be efficient because I don't want you guys sitting up trying to look at a chart right, right after class and your brain is already like, you know, oatmeal and you're trying to sit here and absorb information. It doesn't make any sense. So the New York session might make more sense for you, right? You can come in, wake up a little early, get on the chart around like seven, eight o'clock, get prepared. And now the, beauty, the beautiful part about trading the New York session is you get that overlap. OK, you got the London session that's still volatile and now it's overlapping with the New York session. So now with that New York session and that London session together, those are the two biggest banks all in, in the world. So now you got the, all those, you got those two banks moving all of that money together. Now you get the benefit from that, that, that volatility that's going to come in. Now, this is the thing. Pairs that like to move during that time would be something like the U.S. dollar and maybe like the Great British Pound. Or something like the euro in the U.S. dollar, because now you got the London and the New York. You got the two biggest economies overlapping. So you could find something like the USD and trade that, or you could jump into something like uh, Australian dollar and you know the the JPYs or something like that. Because now with the Australian dollar, you have a slower pair, right? Australian dollar doesn't move very fast, but it hinges a lot on what what the U.S. dollar is doing. So when a dollar is moving up, typically the Australian dollar is moving down. All right. And then vice versa. When the Australian dollar is moving up, the U.S. dollar is moving down. So now you could trade something like Aussie USD and have all that volatility inside of that New York session. And now you get to find a pair that's not very fast, but you can make a good amount of pips within that time frame. OK. Hey, we can't forget about, uh, oh, boy, he getting lost in the comments. Um, he's saying that. Um, how should we focus? Tab, what Tabitha is saying, should we focus on uh, Bitcoin or crypto during the summer? Oh, because, no. You know, no, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Tabitha, listen. <laughs> I, know, I know you're new, right? We, we, was, we was in here last week. You was dropping like all the questions in the world. I was loving it. You, you, was, you was coming at me. Now, I want you to focus on just Forex. And the reason why I say this, a lot of people get excited when it comes to cryptocurrency because it's like so fast and volatile and it's new and everybody's making all this money off of it when the market's moving. But when you master Forex or when you start to get your, your, your footing, right? I want to say master because we're always a student, right? But when you get your footing in Forex, it will definitely benefit you in your crypto trading. OK, like it took me a good while to learn how to really start to trade inside of the crypto market because it's so fast and volatile. A lot of the rules from Forex don't really you know, translate over to crypto. So I don't want to see you guys jumping into something like crypto and saying, OK, I'm going to do the same thing in Forex. And you start just seeing loss after loss after loss because crypto typically a lot of times doesn't like the retest. So I'd rather you guys come into Forex, get a really good understanding of that, find your pair that makes sense for you. And then from there, we can start to expand upon that. But Right now, Forex has to be home, right? Forex, Forex is going to get you, like mentally is going to get you prepared for crypto, okay? 